The latest art exhibit is now on display at the Great Park Gallery. It's called Beyond the Decorative, and it takes a look at how artists today are redefining decorative techniques with new narratives. What's different though is all these artists have uh, inter infused these processes or subjects with more of an interpersonal narrative, whether it relates to um, their personal experiences and self-expression or their uh, cultural heritages. As opposed to decorative objects that don't hold deep meaning, these have many layers. The exhibition opens up with a large-scale bouquet painting from uh, a Los Angeles-based artist, Michael Harnish. And what makes these paintings awesome is um, from afar they read as immaculate um, bouquet paintings that we might historically associate with 17th century Dutch painting. And as you approach the painting closer, you start to realize that a lot of there's a lot of evidence of the artist's studio there. The artworks are very much so about painting and the process of creating more than they are about depicting a perfect image of flowers. Another artist included in this exhibition is Cecilia Perez, who's a Peruvian artist. And um, she's got an interesting process that's based in photography, but it also includes performance and painting as well. As you look at the piece, you'll notice three female figures who are painted in the same pattern as the wallpaper. And that, that wallpaper pattern is um, culturally significant to her Peruvian heritage. So um, there's a lot of underlying meanings to the artworks that are on display here. Such as the next piece from artist Reed Van Bronscott. It's a kitchen sink along with dishes wrapped in a divorcee's wedding gown. I think this, this work speaks a lot to um, social expectations of maybe what we think a marriage is or what a marriage should be. It also, the idea of doing dishes and, and following a meal and can, um, there's a lot of tension to that and um, what happens in domestic spaces between um, family members or life partners. The next collection, the Fabergé Grenades. For this, we're taking a look back in history to World War I. The renowned jewelry manufacturer, Peter Carl Fabergé, was versed in metalwork and as a result, recruited by the Tsar to help with the war efforts. When World War I started, um, they turned his jewelry factory into a munitions facility and he made over six million grenades. So there's this incredible arc and story of Fabergé's life wrapped into this Fabergé grenade story. The beginning starting with an egg, a symbol of life, and ending with a grenade, a symbol of death. And the way it's displayed is also a work of art, a one inch thick coating of acrylic resin, and each work weighing in at about 100 pounds. But the finish is part of the, the, the whole beauty of the piece because it's, um, you can see the way that the light moves through them. It makes them look very dimensional and they're super slick. They almost look wet. So it's this ultra modern finish for something that's old. It's a kind of a juxtaposition there again. And, and lastly, it's like standing behind the safety glass. Like you're, like you're standing behind the bomb proof glass when you're looking at them, this thick glass. The next artist we met takes found objects ready to be discarded and then turns them into pieces to be displayed. Samantha Greenfeld explains how she came to name her collection. Midden is actually an archaeological term for uh, ancient trash deposits that they'll go through and um, it helps them understand a society not just based on its like most valuable objects but like the everyday, the things that like uh, a regular person might discard. All the actual objects are used with Kill's paint coating them in white. A nod to classical Greek and Roman sculptures. I've had some people be like, oh, I feel like this is like an eye spy, you know, and, and that's kind of what I like about it, where people will see something that they will like recognize and um, like something that they might have had as a kid, like a video game console uh, cartridge, or there's little things that are really exciting that I've had a lot of people be like, have a connection to. She also has a series in watercolor based on a similar theme in this exhibit. Another artist who has used found objects and turned them into art? There are two placemats that I found down the street. So a placemat is something that you normally, you know, when you have dinner, two people having dinner, plates, uh, household, domestic. Um, I stitch them together and I place them vertically. So that in this case, they act like a screen and they conceal um, symbols. Fatima Frank's Digital Art on Metal has repeating symbols on her works too. They have this look about them that they are warriors, they're survivors. There are also elements in the background which have 
layered with multiple meanings by putting all these little vacuum cleaners together in a form of a pattern. I am not only uh, making a commentary on uh, women and their perceived gender roles at home, I'm also using the decorative form as a sense of aesthetically, to be, to be aesthetically enjoyed. Zafar Ahmed went to grad school during COVID. She has been eager to express herself and share her story. Now she's able to do so with her vinyl wallpaper art. A combination of both things that I've seen in my daily life of just like growing up as a Islamic Indian woman um, and just like things I've experienced, um, but also like things I see in the digital world. So some of those things are hashtags that are like ingrained in here. So to finally be able to actually make like actual vinyl wallpaper through this um, through this show has been really exciting. For more on this and upcoming shows at Great Park Gallery, visit their website. For ICTV, I'm Jacqueline Twagg.